And you know, what is interesting, John, is I, I, I hope that anyone who doesn't want to kill animals or is an ethical vegan, I wish that these people could experience what it's like to hunt as you have uh, or, or will. It's such a spiritual experience to do this. And in the, in the times that I've hunted with a bow, which has been the, the two times that I've hunted and two times that I've been able to, to harvest a deer, it's incredibly spiritual. <laughs> and it's just this very resounding reminder to be a good human because I've been able to participate in this cycle of life. And it sounds very cheesy, but it's so true. And it's sacramental in a way that I could never have experienced going to the grocery store. And I'm not at a point where I can get all of my meat by hunting right now, but I, it's something that I want to do every year and, and multiple times a year now. And it's going to be more and more part of my life because it's such a reminder that no matter what we're eating, we should be thankful for it, whether it's a plant or an animal. Like, yes. So I've, I've talked about this book in the past. If people are concerned about the ethics of eating meat, I would recommend the book, The Tracker by Tom Brown. There's a fantastic line in that book when Tom Brown, who grew up in the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, kills his first animal under the apprenticeship of an Apache Indian uh, elderly man that he befriends. And, and Tom brings this animal back to the camp and he's weeping as he's killed this deer. And, and this man who he calls grandfather says, when you understand that in order for something to live, something else must die, and this is the way of life, you will understand this. How is the life of a deer different than the life of a blade of grass? And to most of us in 2020, that statement might sound absurd, but at some spiritual level, life is life. And in order for life to continue, life consumes life. And I think that there's, there's a spiritual sort of cycle here that, that in nature, every day, things are dying and getting eaten. <laughs> and whether it's, you know, whether it's a, a deer outside of your house in Norway eating lichen uh, in order to live or a, a plant, um, you know, having a symbiosis with a fungus or a fungus eating a deer after the deer dies or a worm, you know, like there's life and death happening all the time. And I, I've always sort of thought, you know, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to participate in this cycle. We just need to do it intentionally. There's really no way not to participate in that cycle. And I know that in plant-based vegan ideology, often they'll kind of rationalize their way out of that in some, you know, some spiritually with virtue. And I'll leave that to them to do <laughs> respectfully. But, you know, I think that spending time in nature and, and hunting will really help people have a sense of their place within this it's really this, um, this unescapable cycle and, and, and really see how beautiful it is. So that's really awesome you're going to do that. And I can't wait to hear how you like liver. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to trying it. And, you know, a lot of people, when I made the video talking about I'm gonna, that I'm going to start hunting, a lot of people were just making fun of it because it's not sustainable for the whole planet to go hunt deer, right? And, and I understand that. And, and, you know, you can only do what you can. And um, it's, I'm not saying that all people that eat meat should only be hunting their meat uh, because that's just not the reality of, um, you know, the, the, the situation, you know, <laughs> you know, we have almost 8 billion people on the planet, so that's not going to work, but there's always a way to make, you know, your food supply and, and, you know, sourcing your food that is uh, a little bit closer to how things would happen in nature. And hopefully, you know, with the, the, the progression of uh, regenerative farming, like you've talked about in the past, hopefully we will get to a place where this is scalable and everyone has access to that. And of course, I think that everyone should actually go visit the farm that you're sourcing your meat from. Like, you know, get some sort of connection, some sort of real experience that kind of allows you to see where the food is coming from. And if you're eating tofu all the time, go to the, the you know, the monocrop uh, soy uh, fields as well, see what that feels like. And and you kind of get an idea what, where your food is coming from. I think it's really important. Like you're saying, being thankful and grateful for your food is such an important, um, you know, part of eating. I mean, I, so so many vegans in particular, and a, anyone in general in the Western society is just mindlessly eating empty calories, you know, day after day, and they're not even, you know, they they have no sense of uh, appreciation for it. It's just a, a given, right? And we're such a privileged situation where the, the world is kind of overfed rather than under, uh, underfed for the first time ever and people are just you know taking it as a given and not really understanding how lucky and blessed we are to have this abundance of food um and in terms of like you know actual um you know food production and stuff i think it's really important for everyone to realize that you know just because you're not able to source your meats in a way that you want to 
you know, does that mean that you are a bad person for buying a factory farm burger or, or you know, ground beef? Not really, because this is the system that we have created as a, you know, a human population. This is a system that is in place and we can't judge and criticize and hate people for doing something that is, you know, the norm that is right in front of them. Um, so this is a kind of like a, a thing that I don't want to fall in the trap of judging people for choosing things that I'm not choosing just because of, you know, maybe lower income or um, depending on where they live geographically and how well they can source their own food. And like everyone is on, on their own journey and, you know, everyone should respect uh, each other for that. Well said, very well said. And I think that one of the things that I've thought about is that there's really nothing sustainable about 7 billion people on the earth, no matter how you <laughs> cut it. There's nothing sustainable about monocrop agriculture. There's nothing sustainable about anything that we're doing now with 7 billion people on this planet. So yes, 7 billion people could not go hunt, but also 7 billion people can't keep eating monocrop agriculture. Uh, we're in a bugaboo and whether it happens within our generation or our children's children's generation, we are going to be faced with some really severe choices about how to continue as humans on this planet. On the podcast I did with Rob Wolf and Diana Rogers, we repeatedly said, the earth is going to be fine. The ecosystems of this earth, nature, quote unquote, will be fine. The only question is whether humans will persist on this planet. Yeah. So nature is gonna be fine. It's just a question of how humans will continue.